right, everybody. Um, welcome to the Gallery of Green Street. Uh, this is John Guthrie and his, his new work. We're excited to have him here, and, and here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, um, this work, actually, um, I kind of came up with a idea a long time ago. Um, it was all about, I had these canvases that I had, I was postponing painting, so I was gessoing and sanding, and I just kept doing that over and over. Normally, like a lot of people would just like gesso a couple times and sand, and then they just start painting, but I was postponing working, so I just kept gessoing and sanding and doing it over and over and over, and then the surface got really slick. It was really, really slick like porcelain kind of, because I'd done it so many times. And uh, so then I, I didn't want to destroy the surface of the painting. So I, I wanted to keep it, I wanted to try to keep that. So I, I decided, I don't know how I actually figured it out, but uh, just like water down some acrylic paint and like pour it down the surface. So, you know, I could still, you know, have that really smooth surface. I wanted to keep that. Well, it's easy to find painting with a lot of splashiness and drips and splooges all over it and a lot of gratuitous stuff. And so I kind of was subverting that by taking like a drip and actually like truncating the, the, the beginning and end of it. So it was actually about the drip, not just having the drip as a romantic gesture to painting. So I was kind of like taking it out of uh, you know, all the sloppy, sloppiness that goes on. So, um, I mean, that's, you know, that's basically where the whole idea to do this work came from. Um, I would just pick, like, a color and say, okay, and then I'll react to that color, and then I'll start pouring some paint down, and then I'll react to that. And, but now I'm a lot more specific. Uh, like, even though, like, the background color, you might end up not seeing very much of it, I'll still spend, you know, some time, like trying to get that color that I have in my my mind, and then uh, <clears throat> then I start. To, sometimes I put some bands and actually paint in with a brush some bands of color, just to, since I've been working so large, um, just to get things broken up, and then um, you know I just start pouring the paint down. You know, reacting to that, like a lot of them, like I'll have an idea in my mind about what kind of a color situation is going to happen, but uh, it, it never ends up that way. I'm, um, well, at the beginning, there's, there's, you know, I could be rather, you know, uh, broad and just sweeping, putting a lot of of uh, drips down, and then. Uh, Toward the end, you know, I spend like all week looking at it, and then I come in and put like one one line down. You know, but at the beginning, there's a lot. It's it's faster, and then at the end, they come very slowly. And uh, I never know too, like when they're going to become finished either. It might just be like this one I had out for a month, and I thought, wow, what am I going to do with this? And then I just decided that I wasn't going to do anything to this. This is a very unusual one where I actually stopped working fairly early. And when you're working on this, you said you've been make, making this kind of paintings for several years? Yes. Do you have other kinds of paintings or drawings or other kinds of work that you're making alongside it, or is this sort of the focus of the work in your studio? This is it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I worked on, I did these on paper for a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, and then just this year I, mm -hmm. I started working large, and uh, they really opened up, and, and uh, you know, making these small, they were a lot harder to work on small because um, there's not as much room for things to happen, you know, you don't get chances, you know, you don't get, like you can't have an event like this big happening on a painting that's only this big, you know, you don't, you can't get the kind of movement or rhythm or, you know, like, it just doesn't happen on paper, well it's pretty hard to have happen on paper, so. Are you conscious of the manipulation of space that you do with the color relationships, or is it more just concentrating on the color relationships and then they happen? Well, I don't, like, I know, you know, there's always a spatial thing that goes on, but, like, I, I don't, uh, 
think about space when I'm working. That's not one of the things I think about. I think about uh, you know uh, color, obviously, and value, and uh, I don't think like how much space I'm making. I try not to have like really deep space. Like most of these are fairly collapsed. You know, they're not like you know miles deep. Uh, I don't like that kind of space because it gets too, uh, well, because I feel like not as abstract. I think when you have a lot of space, it starts talking more about a place or something, and it's more physical than I want them to be. I don't want them to be, I want them to be more, I guess I want them to be more mental, you know, and not, not uh, relating so specifically to They do even to me too. Like uh, afterward, like the when I'm making them, I, I I don't really think, oh, that's not how I make the decisions about what colors I'm using. You know, it's all like for example, like this one here. Um, I just like this painting I wanted to make, and it was going to be about. I had this idea that it was going to be about like pink and orange. All right, beforehand, like somebody said to me, oh, I really like how you can make paintings with pink and orange, and I was like. I never really thought about it, so I said, okay, I'm going to do some pink and orange paint. So I was doing that, and then I decided, like, I didn't want to, I wanted to set myself up with uh, a situation where I didn't use blue or green in that painting, so um, just to see, you know, just kind of a, to limit myself. So uh, a lot of the time, I'll, I'll, like, not allow myself to use a certain color until maybe right at the end, or... Uh, so I don't go to the same place that I have on some of the other paintings. You know, I try not to be repetitive because uh, you know I have my favorite colors, and uh, I just you know I'll start working and I'll think, wow, I need a blue, but I'm not going to use that one. I always use, and then I'm mixing, mixing, mixing. Like a half hour later, I come up with that perfect blue, and it's the same one that I. <laughs> <laughs> I love. It. What about flat and glossy? Mm -hmm. Well, that's just. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not really, yeah, it is. I wouldn't say it's an accident, but uh, I've no, chose to, to leave it like that. Um, the backgrounds are the glossy part, and then when you water down the paint, it's flat. Are you using just acrylic water down, or are you adding any kind of gel to it? No, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just acrylic. You know, there's no medium in it. So, like, so how do you achieve the, the opaque quality? Um, well, that's just about color density. That's just about how much paint is in, in the mix. If you want it to be transparent, you put more water in and it becomes transparent. Yeah, but what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> how do you get it so liquid without being transparent? Um, <clears throat> is it titanium? Well, so, some colors are transparent. I mean, like this, you know, like uh, yellows are, tra you know, cadmium yellow is opaque, but every other yellow you can buy is transparent. That's why cadmiums are expensive. And a lot of reds, are, all the reds are transparent except the cadmium red. Magentas are transparent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, they're, you know, it's just like every paint is its own animal. And they're all different chemical compositions, and so they all act differently. They have different, they weigh different amounts. You know, you get a jar of, you know, lead white, it's very heavy, and then a jar of something else, and it's very light. I mean, so they're all different. So um, I pretty much just work with, you know, the way the paints are. And, I don't know, I guess. Do you speak to the brand? Um, yeah, I have, like, I like Liquitex because it's, uh, it's already the consistency that I like, but see then if you use some other kinds, you just have to uh, get them to that consistency. Consistency takes a long time. You know, there's a lot of chance involved and then there's a lot of uh, control too, so, you know, like a lot of time, like I put a line in and uh, it, 
you know, I'll think, okay, I need something to go right next to there. And then I put the line down and it goes over there. So, so I'm stuck with that. And then, but then when that happens, like it creates another situation that I have to deal with. And there's a lot of chance thrown in that way. Things that I never would have planned, like chance colors coming together. Like when I first started making them, like I was like, wow, I really love that one color. I want to, I want to put that some other places. Then I go up and look, and it's actually like three, three lines that have made that situation that I really love. And I can't go put that somewhere else. So I can kind of try, but you, you can't. You can try really hard. And, uh, it is all about you know me trying to control this stuff as much as I can. But uh, you know, a lot of time things happen that are really you know messed up. You know, they're not straight, and I love that a lot, and I try to to lead them that way. I used to, um, when I first started making these, I would turn them upside down and do them both ways so that I could control and get things just the way I wanted. And uh, now, like pretty much all this work, they were all just done from top to bottom. And I just thought they were more honest that way. And just, just to lose a little control, you know, so. My first thought on this is that, um like when I first saw it, I thought there are a lot of lines, and I saw the structure of the lines, and I came up to it, and the lines are not straight, and they're not perfect lines. And upon the illusion of it is that it's a very structured piece. Mm -hmm. But then um, I think that there's a large correlation between figurative work and this, and that in figurative work, there's a lot of pieces that make up the whole. Like even your process, you're saying you're just wing and sanding, doing that over and over again. It's all about, like, you minute things that make up the whole. And then you were talking about it's the freedom of the color and the freedom of applying the lines. Yeah, this this work, I realized, I, I didn't really think about it I was making, but it's so much like uh, like academic style painting uh, or, or any kind of painting, like all, all the same, <clears throat> you have to build them up slowly and you, you don't build up one part faster than the other and you have your highlights and your, you know, it's all the same if this was a, a portrait or, you know, a figure, like, it's the same, you know, visual language and the same, you know, structure as, as this painting. Yeah, it's like just what you were saying, you know, it has all that behind it. Um, but I was like, this painting, though, um, it's so much about process for me. I mean, it's so much about uh, making the stretcher and you know, spending all that time, like, I don't really get to touch these paintings. These paintings are, you know, I, I sand and gesso and do all this physical stuff, but like, once I start putting the paint on, like, I'm not touching these paintings. I don't, it's not, I don't have that physical connection with these paintings anymore. It's all about, it's, it's indirect. So then I take my little X-Acto knife and I'm like picking little crumbs out of the paint and trying to clean it up, but that's, that's how I get to touch the painting. Well, now I get to touch it, but it's 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 a lot like that. Uh, it, it's it's a strange process, and I realize like uh, I think that's why I spend so much time gesturing and sanding because that's my that's when I get to touch them, and that's the physical part to me. You know, that's like the making. You know, because the rest of it is is rather it's kind of weird like that. What's that? Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's it's not as it's not it's just not physical. It's not like when you have a brush and you're pushing and you can feel the canvas responding and you can really you know or stick your finger, or use a palette knife or whatever. Like I don't get to do any of that. Yeah, pretty good. but I noticed that they're all titled. Yeah. So when does that happen? That happens like this week when we're sitting on the couch <laughs> with the dictionary and I'm talking to my studio mate and we're coming up with things. Like basically, you know, um, the illusion. To, you know, water is a big thing for me. Um, you know, they're about, you know, they're made from gravity. Um, you know, and sometimes uh, allusions to science or, you know, things like that. But water is a really good analogy for me. Uh, it always has been. Even in all my work, it always has, like, this wateryness about it or this fluid aspect. How does this work relate to what you were doing before? Um, oh, that's a good question. <clears throat> well, um, 
I think, well, as I was saying before, it came about because uh, I decided to use something that I'd used more as a background and then had worked with figures and things to bring that to the forefront and just have that be the subject of the work. But, I mean, I don't think it's explicitly related to that work. You know, I... You were, I mean, had you, you worked in figures before? Yeah. I mean, did you feel like you were coming to the end of that body of work and then... Yeah, I've always felt this? like, I, I always really felt like, I, I never felt comfortable with the representation whole aspect of my work. I, I just never really felt like it was completely right for me. I, I, I always wanted to, uh, I, I just didn't see what, you know, it just never completely sat right with me. That's all I can say about that. Uh, so it was a relief. I just felt so liberated to drop that and just work abstractly. <coughs> But, you know, working abstractly, you know, you can paint yourself into a corner that way, I think, pretty easily. Um, you know, like things I've said, um, you know, about removing all representation, about having it be as simple as possible, you know. So, I mean, you can just keep getting simpler for so long, and then you're left with nothing to paint, maybe, you know. So it's, I've kind of done that before, you know. And then working with figures became liberating at that point. So I can't say that I, I wouldn't do that again. But uh, no, I mean this work does relate to my other work because I've always had like fields, you know, like the whole painting. Usually, a lot of the time we'll read just as one big field and uh, have like some sort of uh, optical mixing of the colors and stuff. But I don't, I don't really think about that work so much now. Have you thought about them in relation to each other? Like maybe compare <clears throat> them to text or something? Well, um, I usually make them two at a time. So, um, um, but no, I've had, I had a, a, like a sister painting to that one there, and I actually butted them up to each other. <clears throat> and uh, after like 45 minutes, I was having a physical reaction. I wanted to throw up. <laughs> I hated it. It was, it was wrong. That's an interesting part to this of your work. Is some of it is very pleasing, whereas other, others are I can only look at for you know, 30 seconds at the most before I have to turn my head. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I, I, let me qualify that by saying that I think that's an interesting Aspect more. Um, do you think about that? Well, um, I want people to be able to look at them more than 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 I mean, you know, but like for this one, for example, you begin to kind of, it's very hypnotic. Yeah. I mean, my eyes begin to cross. Well, I, I just try to not do the same thing all the time, so yeah, I realize that, you know. more about me like stopping now like you know this one I actually I'm, I'm the last bunch of paintings I've done I actually stop before I because I can all bring them up to the same finish level you know like just working on them getting them all right and they become they just become very finished I think which I think isn't always a good thing you know so um, so I've been stopping early like this one yeah I, I realize it has that aspect of it so, but I just had to like drop it and just, you know, just make another one. And like that dark one on the, the front wall was like that too. Um, that, you know, and then also the big one with the blue swaths in it, like that one was another one that was prematurely stopped, you know, or I had to really force myself to, to not fill those in, you know. Yeah, I think it would be hard to stop, and that's probably why, with the blue one, you have to make yourself stop, because you notice that you get so much more depth every time you do something different, and I, I just can't understand the coming from with that one, because I think the more colors, the better every time. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, like, every time you add, like, um, like, for example, if I took this painting here, and I put, like, a piece of blue down it, like, 
I might have to work on that painting for two more months now because I did that one thing. Because every time you do one thing, just a single line, if you're going to leave it, it affects the whole rest of the painting. So, you know, you have to decide if it's, you know, that doesn't always happen, but so that's, how, <clears throat> that's how they can become finished too. Like all of a sudden, like I'll think, oh my God, I've got to work months, this is never going to be done. Then you add one color and then it, it finished the painting somehow. But sometimes you add one color and it completely unravels the whole painting and then you're stuck working on it. Huh? Um, uh, yeah, I, I try sometimes, but I, I don't like to do it. But uh, I have, like, if I'm toward the end, like, if I just put, like, one line down and it's a real disaster, like, I'll wash it off. But I, I don't, don't do that much time. You don't have much time, and you, it's not a good idea. Keeps you painting these. I know you talk about painting yourself in the corner, but what keeps you painting these? Um, well, because I still feel, I still love making them, and uh, when I do it, I, I, I'm amazed, like I must have poured like a million lines down these by now, and uh, sometimes I just do something and it just, um, it blows me away. I can't believe it's like, wow, I never thought that color would do that. You know, I never thought that putting this paint like that would cause that effect. I, you know, that happens all the time. It happens in every painting. Like I just, you know, I mix the paint and I put my knife and I say, yeah, I think that's what I want. I want to do that. And then I do it and it does something different. Like I can't predict. And uh, I love that about it. You know, it's really, I, I get excited about it when I'm making them. Um, you know, they're, <clears throat> you know, like this painting, it's like, uh, it's hard and it gets boring. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's no fun sometimes, and uh, it's like, I, I assume everybody knows that, but uh, you just have to keep working through it too. You know, I, sometimes I go in and I love it, and everything I do is great, and every time I put something down, it does exactly what I want, and it's wonderful, and then the other time, it's like I said, really difficult, and, uh, but I just keep doing it anyway. When you talk, when you talk about the size of the, of the painting, you talk about it in terms of your physical relationship with it, and then you also talk about the size of, of your works on paper and how you were limited by that. I'm just wondering if you've given thought to if they were bigger. I mean, if this was like a whole yeah. length, the, the, the length of this wall or something. And you also, you know, in terms of how you talk about the depth of it and how it operates in the field. Well, I think I discovered um, that there's something about, uh, there's something right for me anyway about the, the you know, kind of uh, parallel between a figure and the proportion of these paintings. Um, like I said, I put these, I put two of those together, and I had them on the wall for like 45 minutes. I really just wanted to throw up. I couldn't. And that stand was because it. of the, the size. Yes, it just was so wrong. It just, it was just like kind of obscene somehow. I just didn't. Because there was such a wide expanse, or because the two colors were, the no. two canvases were remaining. Two no, two it wasn't that at all. They, they looked <laughs> like uh, it belonged together, but uh, it was just so wrong. I don't know why. I, I don't. I can't explain it. But, uh, and as far as like you know, I think I realized like with those two paintings in there that I'm I'm almost at the the love you know the the biggest they can be because uh, you know because they always end up breaking up into like bands of a certain width and you know there's the thickness of the line and I just don't think it, it could get any bigger just the proportions are, are you know I feel like I'm at the the limit of the proportions almost. Thank you, the, the darkest one is the, the last one that I was still working on the night that we hung the show. <laughs> With the fan. <laughs> just had the fan going, and I was like, James, yeah, I'm ready. Come on over. <laughs> I got the fan blowing on this one. Um, so what's the, uh, the kind of next challenge that you have for yourself? Um, the next challenge I have for myself? I don't know. No, I can't say. I have to find that out in the studio. Okay. Thank you.